Hi guys, I'm Dr. Candy and I'm back again with little actions that make a big difference to your overall health and wellness. So this week, breast cancer overtook lung cancer as the most common cancer in the world. And frankly, I'm still processing it. Like lung cancer, which was number one for almost two decades, affects both men and women. But breast cancer predominantly just affects one gender. It accounts for nearly 12% of new cases each year according to the WHO. Now I don't know if it's because I'm a woman and or I'm black and we're you know more disproportionately affected by breast cancer but these numbers are really hard hitting. Amongst women it is the number one diagnosed cancer and the leading cause of death worldwide. About one in eight people are diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. So I thought it was really important that we just you know take a bit of time to talk about breast cancer again, raise more awareness and have that discussion. Breast cancer occurs because abnormal cells begin to grow and they divide really rapidly, you know, and compete for space against good cells. And then they start to accumulate and form together causing a lump or a mass. And then this can spread to dis distant areas through the lymph nodes um, to other parts of the body essentially. So all the things I mentioned in my lifestyle video affect cancer significantly. A third of the deaths from cancer is attributed to smoking, um, poor diet, being overweight, lack of exercise and increased alcohol intake. But more specifically to breast cancer, we think that you're more at risk if you have a family history of breast cancer, although more than 75% don't have any family history. If you have a previous diagnosis of breast cancer or a previous non-cancerous breast lump. And then age is a big factor too, as the risk increases the older you become. So that's why the NHS roll out a three yearly screening program uh, for women over the age of 50. Now, women with a higher than average risk of developing breast cancer may be offered screening and genetic testing earlier than this, depending on the situation. So the symptoms of breast cancer, uh, we know the number one is a lump or thickened area of tissue, but most of the times this isn't cancerous, but nevertheless, it's important to see your GP. But you can also get a change in shape and size of your breasts, a lump or swelling in your armpits, which is where the lymph nodes are, a discharge from your nipples, not, not including milk, it's typically green or sometimes bloody as well. You can get changes to the skin of your breast, so puckering or dimpling of the breast. And then the actual nipple can have some changes too, with a rash around the nipple or the nipple being more drawn in. Breast cancer is often painless, but I think a persistent pain also warrants a further investigation and inspection by your GP. So as well as affecting older women more than younger women, breast cancer is more likely to affect black women compared to white women especially in some key areas. So the breast cancer mortality rate, death rate, according to the CDC, is about 40% higher amongst black women compared to whites, even though the rates of actually getting the disease are about the same. Black women are more likely to be diagnosed with a more advanced breast cancer compared to white women, and the tumors in black patients are often larger, spread quicker, and they're more aggressive. Black women are two times more likely to suffer from triple negative breast cancer, which is when there are no hormonal receptors um, on the breast cancer tissue. So it's not amenable to you know, any hormonal treatment. And then about 30% of newly diagnosed breast cancer patients who are black are actually younger than 50 years old. And that's compared to 20% of white people. Which really begs the question for me whether we should be doing this 50-year uh, screening a bit earlier for black women. I'd love to know your thoughts. So now to the crux of the matter. Uh, preventing breast cancer. What can we do? Well, the best chance of recovery is from early detection. And the best way to early detect is by checking your breasts regularly acting on any concerns quickly and by attending your screenings as soon as you're eligible and every time you're eligible. There are also benefits from women who maintain a healthy weight, especially if you're over the menopausal age, as the more estrogen produced by fatty tissue, etc., can increase the risk of breast cancer. Exercising regularly, because regular exercise reduces your risk by almost a third. 
having a low intake of sugary foods and drinks and you know consuming saturated fats in your diet and then reducing quite significantly the amount of alcohol that you drink. Studies have also shown that women who breastfeed are statistically less likely to develop breast cancer than those who do not. So it postulated again that this is due to hormonal levels remaining a little bit more stable during the time of breastfeeding. As I've mentioned already, regular mammograms is really important. So go and check now with your mum, your aunt, your grandma, your neighbour, if they've attended their mammogram recently and what was the result. And then finally, I come on to self-examination. So I will show you how to uh, self-examine at the end of this video. But over the years, there's been some debate over just how valuable breast self-examination is. And that's mainly based on a few studies. For example, a 2008 study of 400,000 women in Russia and China that breast self-examined didn't have, showed that there weren't any significant effects on survival rates. <clears throat> And that it might also cause more harm than good because it increases the unnecessary investigations, biopsies, etc. And then increases the mental anxiety and worry that's created. So on the back of this and a few other studies, some organisations like the American Cancer Society no longer recommend breast self-examination as a screening tool for women with an average risk of breast cancer. Now, <clears throat> this honestly doesn't make complete sense to me. Um, you know, from my own practice, I've seen the importance of self-examination in detecting early stage breast cancer. I think it's a useful tool, especially when coupled with other things like symptoms, history, screening and your doctor's assessment. So I will take some time now to just explain to you rather quickly how to examine your breasts. And I think it's really important that you do this every month. Try and do it away from your period cycle because we know that our breasts change a lot during um, the hormonal changes of our periods. And just stick to a day, once a month, that you can examine your breasts and do it wherever you feel comfortable. Hi guys, so I'm all about little actions that make a big difference to your overall health and wellness. So I'm just gonna take a brief moment to show you how to breast self-examine. And it doesn't take too long. As I mentioned earlier, it's something that you should be doing every month. Use an app on your phone to set a reminder and also bring someone along the journey with you. So your mum or your friend, just so that you can feel encouraged and you know it doesn't become too much of a chore as you're doing it. So starting out, I just want you to remember that it's really important that you get to know your breasts. Obviously your breasts are completely different to anybody else's and it's really important that you know what normal is for you so that you can recognise easier when something's abnormal. Remember that no two breasts are twins, they're siblings, so I, I would never expect one breast to be exactly identical to the other, okay? Now the first thing I want you to do is undress from the waist up, no bra, and just have a look in the mirror. Have a look at your breast, get to know you just like you would your face, and just get to know, you know, your breast in all its beauty. Then the next thing I want you to do is put your arms into your, your hands into your hips and push into your hips as hard as possible. And as you do this, I would just want you to know and looking in the mirror, look for any changes in the skin, any changes in the breast and any changes in the nipple, okay? And then after you do that, I want you to do the same thing, but put your hands over your head and do, again, looking for any changes in your skin, any changes in your breasts and any changes in the nipple. Now, the next part, it's best if you lay down, you're still topless from the waist up, and you use the pads of your fingers and use the opposite hand for the opposite breast. So you use the pads of your fingers in a circular motion to feel around for any lumps or any changes or thickening of tissue that you may be worried about. Now, you can do this in a circular motion, as I mentioned, but you can also do this up and down, as some people prefer. So I like to start from the nipple, and I'll just show you how, and just work my way around the nipple first, and then just slowly get larger, and larger till I work the whole breast area, okay? And just to remember that your breast is from the top of your tummy all the way to your collarbone, that whole area, and then it extends into your armpits too. So then you'd also check into your armpits for any lumps or abnormalities that you might be worried about. 
Now, it's important to remember that if you do feel something strange or abnormal, try not to worry. In most cases, it isn't breast cancer, but it is really important that you just get it checked with your GP. So don't delay, you know, the pandemic's not an excuse. Make sure that you attend all your regular checkups, all your screenings as you would. It's really important that you do these little actions every month that could make a big difference to your overall health and wellness. Thanks for listening and please share with somebody who might need this information.